T Squad, it's your girl Keisha, and I'm here with tonight's All T All Shade Claw Season 2 Episode 4 Review. So tonight's episode was told from the perspective of Quiet Anne, which I have been looking forward to. So happy that we got to delve in a little bit more into her backstory and her character. I really, really like tonight's episode. So we start off with the episode with Quiet Anne getting a call from DFS about them adopting a baby that her and Arlene were going to adopt together, but since they're broken up, she can no longer adopt a baby. So all ready starting her day is just terrible off the rip she is just not into it she has been depressed ever since she set arlene up and they their relationship ended so we see that she lives in a trailer on the beach quiet Anne is just basically just trying to keep her shit together because she's about to lose it at any moment now Desna and Zlata are handling business. Quiet Ann comes in and hand her some paperwork. Desna tells her when she's done, she'll ride back to the salon with Quiet Ann. Zlata tells her, you know, you don't need to explain yourself to subordinates. And Quiet Ann looking at her like, bitch, <laughs> keep it up, girl. So Polly treating the strippers like she a dance coach from off fame. She done made her voice deeper, y'all. I mean, not Quiet Ann. Polly is taking this thing very seriously um as being their coach and i'll holler because i just love polly uh character you know i love carrie press and she gives me nothing but life so quiet and is pissed because she got to drive desna and uncle daddy around like she they errand boy so they sitting in the car uncle daddy still want to take zlata out but desna reminds him that they agree to make this shit work when the new clinic open business will be even more profitable and you know desna and the girls are getting money handled with fists now they don't really need uncle daddy no more so um back at the salon quiet and peeps that jen's drunk Desna tells them that Gregory mama is coming and she needs everything to be perfect. This makes Jen think of her own mama and, you know, her mother trying to sleep with Bryce. Desna tells her she needs to get over it and then quotes one of Zlata's little, you know, word of the day, little quotes or whatever. And everybody like, girl, get off Zlata, puss. Stop licking on a clip. <laughs> so she asked Quiet Ann to come rub her shoulders like she her personal masseuse. And then tell her to clean out the bowls and Quiet Ann in her head, you know, having these thoughts like, I'm so sick and tired of these hoes. They're going to keep on pressing me. They're going to see what it really look like out here in these streets. <laughs> like these hoes keep on playing me like shit is sweet. Like I won't go upside their head. So then this fine ass man come in and asked speak to his sister. And Quiet Ann like, what the hell is you doing here? And we realized that's her brother. So she want to talk to him outside of Desna and them like, no, introduce us. Girl. I hope you don't, you know, ain't embarrassed by us. So she introduced her brother. His name is Henry and he's a state senator. Marty tells Polly that she's learning the Quran and that she and Malik can't have sex because the nation forbids interracial sex. So they can only be study buddies. And Polly just looking like, where did I go wrong, Jesus? Where did I go wrong with this child? So... Henry want Quiet Ann to come to uh, dinner with their parents, who she has not seen in years. He wants her to be his wingman because he's gay and in the closet. She feels like she's been shunned by her parents because she's out and proud to be gay. Meanwhile, her closeted brother is looked like looked upon as the golden child. They just love and adore. And it's just like Quiet Ann can't win for losing. So... Um, she agrees to come to dinner. Gregory Mama shows up at the shop. His mama confronts Desna on her opinions about her and Gregory's relationship, but says that she understands where Desna is coming from. Zlata walks in and Desna introduces her to Gregory's mom. Zlata refers to Desna as her sister and Quiet Ann ain't feeling in her head because she do not like their relationship and how close they're getting. Desna gets a text and asks to speak to Quiet Ann off to the side and Quiet Ann like finally she sees that I'm over here like just drowning on the inside. She sees that this is my friend. She sees that I'm in distress. But when she gets over there to talk to Desna, Desna makes her go to work again and tells her that she needs to go pick up some stuff for her. So Quiet Ann is sent to the new clinic to basically beat the construction workers into get doing their job. She hitting them with bats. She fucking up some shit. So she, we then see her in the van looking at old pictures of her and Arlene together. And then she gets a text message from Desmond asking her to go pick up a ribbon for the opening of the new clinic. 
So she goes to pick up the ribbon. Quiet in, then comes back to the shop with the ribbon to see Zlata and Gregory. Mama still there. And she like, these hoes ain't left yet. Zlata uh, bought everyone food, but they didn't even save her none. It's just another aspect of Quiet and being looked over. Gregory, Mama trying to figure out why Desna ain't been married at you know her age, and she needs to know if she's worthy of marrying her son. And Desna like marrying your son, like oh my God, he he gonna propose to me soon. So her and the girls start cheering. They had their own little party because she about to get married in her head. And I'm like, oh, I hope this nigga is about to you know propose to you because based off what his Mama said, I don't know if he proposed to you or not so they celebrating they drinking having champagne but quiet Ann is not happy for her because she feels like Desna is living the life that she should have had with Arlene so the girls point out that Gregory ain't a drug dealer and he don't take her for granted like Rolla did but I'm like girl <laughs> you living a secret life child so quiet Ann thinking this could have been you know her celebration of her getting married and having a baby on the way they all cheering and dancing and stuff and then we see dean put pussy popping on the hand saying off to the side and that's like dean put your puss up ain't nobody trying to see that shit now so that's the leave to meet with zlata the girls hear dean and virginia outside arguing they arguing because she's trying to help him with his little dance routine but he don't want virginia help quiet and cleans up for dinner and home girl looks great she is snatched she got her titties up got her hair down got her a badass look new york and come company <laughs> soup so as soon as she arrived to dinner with her parents them heifers is rude to her her brother announces that he's running for governor they down her for being a security guard at the nail salon because she has a degree and speaks five languages we see that quiet and comes from a very affluent family they tell her that you know they spoke to her ex-husband and they want her to try to work things out with him because they feel like any man that you know still wants to be with her after she tried to kill his girlfriend with a beer bottle is you know a keeper and quiet and reminds them that um mother father <clears throat> abuela <laughs> whatever the hell y'all call mommy poppy i'm a dyke i like pussy so she said as a matter of fact it wasn't his girlfriend it was mine uh <laughs> so she goes to the bathroom and she spark up and she just break down and cry because quiet and is just going through it i felt so bad and the acting by old girl i can i can never forget remember her name and forgive me because i know you all watch my reviews i'm so sorry but you did that tonight your acting was superb so she listens to an old message from Arlene where Arlene is telling her that, you know, they're so close to getting this baby and she's going to be such a good mother and she crying. She returns to the table and she go off on everybody and was like, yeah, and this nigga right here is gay. Ha! <laughs> I ain't the only one over here like the same sex. Mom and daddy like, girl, we gay too. She like, uh, excuse you? And they like, girl, we never had a problem with you being gay. We gay. We each other birds. <laughs> what you think <laughs> this is? So she like, what in the hell is going on, Jesus? So she and her brother land on the beach laughing about the shit. And he apologizes to her for not being more supportive of her. Jen calls Ann and says that she need her help. She goes to this little corner store and find her getting uncuffed by a security guard for stealing alcohol. Jen is just off the wagon. She is tripping. As they walking out, the, the lawn for the store go off. And we see that this helper got another bottle of wine in her purse. Quiet and give it to the security guard, and then all of a sudden, Jen threw up all over her shoes. I would have beat Jen's ass. So, at an 8A, at an 8A meeting, the girls are there to support Jen. She and Bryce connect. Jen up her singing this country western song to Bryce. They having a duet. The lyrics have me on the floor hollering. Good voice, by the way, Jen Line. You got that girl. You need to put out a record. So. They get done singing. It looked like they, you know, about to reunite. They walk out the AAA building and um, Bryce announces to her that he don't want to rekindle nothing. He want a divorce and he's already talked to a lawyer. Bryce said he ain't got time for this. We got some shit to plan before shit pop off. As lots of golf game rollers say, D keep this to yourself. And Desi say, What are y'all up to? Bryce said, We're increasing our ranks. And I couldn't make out whatever else he said. Virginia say, you going to tell Zlata? And Des like, I don't know. Like, I don't really know what I should do. So the girls return to the shop. Marnie comes in because she got sent home from school early for wearing the Islamic scarf around her head. And Polly say, you are a 17-year-old white girl who's suddenly all about the nation of Islam. <laughs> like, sis, get your life. Marnie uh, say, you are not my mom. This was always a temporary thing. One day, I'm going to leave. And Polly freak out. She's like, no, 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 no. You can't leave me. I'm never going to let you go, Lillian. And all the girls are like, oh, shit. And we all like, who the fuck is Lillian? So do Polly got a kid out there, too? Like, who in the hell is Lillian? Marnie get freaked out. Like, girl, I got to go. And she leave. Disney come over to Polly and try to hug her. But Marnie like, I'm good. And she walk off.
So then Desa turned to the girls and said, you know, what should I do? You know, should she tell Zlata about Uncle Daddy and what he's planning? Or should she keep it a secret? Desna's gut is telling her to be loyal, but she don't really know who to be loyal to, Zlata or Uncle Daddy. She then turns to Quiet Ann and asks her, you know, what you think? Quiet Ann said, you got a lot of nerve asking me about loyalty. And Desna say, what is your problem? Quiet Ann say, I sold out the love of my life for you. And Desna say, what are you talking about? Quiet Ann say, you heard me, bitch. And I was like, ooh, shit, about to get real. So Desna say, call me that again. And she walk up on Quiet Ann like she bought that life. And Quiet Ann say, bitch. <laughs> and then she pushed Desa. They get to slapping this shit. And then Quiet Ann slapped the shit out of Desa. Desa didn't see that shit coming. She was not ready. She almost got that hoop earring slapped off her face. Desa say, what is your problem? And Quiet Ann say, your life has become about two things. Business with Zlata and Mary and Gregory. And because of that, you've lost sight of all of your friends. Desa say, I have done more than my fair share for your ass. And you're going to sit up here and lie like that? And Quiet Ann say, you think I'm lying? You ruined my, I ruined my life for you. Desa say, bitch, how? And Quiet Ann say, we were going to have a child. And then they still like, oh, shit. And so she storm off and Polly follows her and tries to check on her and tries to, you know, tell her a story to cheer up and connect with her. And Quiet Ann tell, don't nobody want to hear that shit, you know, because your stories are a bunch of bullshit. Don't nobody believe it because you walking around playing a damn character all of your goddamn stupid ass life. Polly said, girl, don't judge me because you just like me. The real you is inside your head judging all of us. And it goes back to the entire episode of her judging them in her head and saying all these things, all these things that she really feels about them in her head. But she won't voice these things out loud to them. So Polly hit it right on the nose. Quiet Ann then tells Desna and the girls that she hasn't been there for Jennifer and hasn't noticed how unhappy that she's been herself. Quiet Ann say they had a baby available for me yesterday would have been the day we would have been a family but because of it uh, but because of you it was all ruined Desi say you were adopted and Quiet Ann say I told you I had to give up my baby when I was a kid all I ever wanted was a family but you made me break up with Arlene I destroyed her life Desna hugs her and she cries and Quiet Ann apologizes for slapping her Desna didn't know how much she meant to her and says that she's sorry for ever hurting her and that she would never put her in that position if she would have known Quiet Ann says you know it's all good she moved on with her life she got somebody else and Desna like I ain't never known you to give up go on and get your girl so then we see Quiet Ann go to Orlean house she's knocking on the door but she don't answer she get in the car she beating on the steering wheel she call her phone she don't answer she leave a voicemail message basically telling her that she set her up oh, and she did it to protect Desna but she'll do any and everything to get her back and she want her back and she belong to her and I'm like why in the hell would you leave that voice message now she got this shit on you I'm like I really feel like based off this episode and the way uh, they had that um, the way they had Quiet and leave Arlene that voicemail message either she gonna get killed this season, Quiet Ann, or Quiet Ann gonna end up back in jail. It don't look good for me and my head for Quiet Ann. Some big shit gonna happen this season, Quiet Ann. I feel like something bad is gonna happen to her character this season. So she hangs up, Arlene calls her back and tells her that she's not seeing anyone and to come by her house later on that night. Um, then we see Arlene pick up Dr. Ken and place him under arrest Cause she's still a damn cop. And I was like, see, shit is going all to hell. So let me know what y'all thought about tonight's episode of Claws. I really enjoyed tonight's episode of Claws. I give tonight's episode an A. It was very good. Let's talk down below. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys so much. And I will see you all tomorrow for loving hip hop and basketball wise.